They're off. Racing into stride at seven furlongs in the group three. Lamwade stud, Nell Gwyn stakes. And in light blue, Ventura Diamond is the first one to begin. From Saffron Beach, who's racing in second. The pink and white, Love Is You. The red, white and blue is sacred over the wall, the running rail. More down the centre with the white-faced Chakoya. Now getting much more prominent and nearly sharing now the lead with Ventura Diamond. Chakoya to the outside of Ventura Diamond. Then Saffron Beach, Love Is You, Mamba Wamba and Sacred. Next is Towerhood, then Divine Light, the royal blue. The back two, a star of Emirati and Seattle Rock. So a little in it for the lead, involving Ventura Diamond against the running rail. A little wider out Chakoya as they race inside the final three and a half furlong. Saffron Beach is a handy third. Then Divine Light and Love Is You. Star of Emirati is getting closer. Then Mamba Wamba, who's been rustled along. Also pressure now for Tower Hub. Sacred on the inside. Seattle Rock last of all. They make their way down towards the final quarter mile. Chakoya with a small lead from Saffron Beach. And then Ventura Diamond. Star of Emirati trying to come into it. Then Divine light sacred is trying to thread her way through as well they run to the final furlong and sacred has now joined issue with chakoya and saffron beach love is you is running onto the outside in pink and white but it's sacred who leads inside the final furlong from saffron beach and love is you and racing up towards the line the nail grim will go to sacred who's beaten saffron beach and love is you then chakoya seattle rock star of emirati and divine light We spoke to William Haggis before the Nell Gwyn and we could speak to him afterwards as well because Sacred has won. Congratulations and she did that nicely. She did. And you're going to tell me about how the race panned out and whether it panned out as you'd hoped it would. Well we were hoping uh, to ride her forward and uh, as if staying the trip was likely. We weren't going to sort of ride her from behind but Ryan said he got shuffled back a bit by Roger Charlton's filly on the rail and was probably a bit further back than he would have liked. But actually, when the gap came, she showed what she showed us at home. She has a nice turn of foot, and she was able to get into a challenging position and then picked up to win the race. And from her work at home, you were quite confident she'd get the seven, weren't you? I can't remember what I said to you an <laughs> hour ago, but I <laughs> think I was. Yeah, I and mean, we've had no indication that she's this very fast filly at home. She's got class, mm -hmm. and if she relaxes and races properly, She's had a very good winter and she proved that today. So maybe it was just immaturity that was not letting her get home last year, maybe? I don't know. I think the ground is very important to her. I think she has to have quick ground. Most exceeding excels do. And I think it, the bit that disappointed me was the Lowther when she came to win and didn't. And I thought she was outstayed by Miss Amulet. And I, I thought there, ooh, I'm not sure. But actually, she's probably asking her we were asking her to race too early and I think but the ground's the problem the ground was the problem at the back end it was loose and soft all the time and Ted's probably helped as well that recommendation of the tongue tie well you'd think so yeah but you know there's no point having these chaps in and they're not taking any notice of what what they say and, and um, you know I've got a great team of work riders and they know what we want and and uh, you know we we listen to them when we think it's a solid suggestion sometimes i act on my own uh, feelings and my gut feelings but uh, usually i'm wrong it cuts both ways i think it cuts both ways what what did you make of the quality of that race that nelgwin i thought this morning it wasn't a strong race i thought uh, Obviously, Rogers filly was very impressive uh, as a two-year-old and, and did well. And, and Saffron Beach, I liked her and admired her guts. But the seconds, yeah, not bad, but not top, top class. So I don't think it was a great race, but I thought the style of a victory was good. How much will yours come on for it? No idea. I remember years and years ago, Bruff Scott uh, was interviewing Henry Cecil after the Craven Stakes. And Henry was about a foot higher than Bruff. And Bruff sort of intimated that the Guineas was um, uh, the next stop and uh, that the horse was very fit. And Henry just looked down at him and said, well, that's the idea, isn't it? <laughs> and, and it was a very, it was an excellent remark. And that's really, you know, we have only two weeks to the Guineas, two weeks and a bit. You know, they're not going to improve. I think she'll make some nice improvement. Whether she makes improvement to win the race is, is, another, is another thing and whether she gets a mile properly 
in a strong run race on this track is another thing. But there's one 1,000 guineas. I never put her in in France. And uh, so she'll come here, God willing. OK, well, very best of luck with that. I didn't ask you earlier when we spoke about the half that in that the race that yeah. tends to be pretty hot. Yeah, our last well, race. he's a quite an interesting horse. Uh, I'm hoping that he'll improve for the step up in trip which you'll need to, it's, they're a lot fancier than the race, they mm. always are. Uh, but he's a nice horse and he's, um, he, he won't mind the ground and his work has been excellent this year and he won nicely, a bit sleepy at Lingfield, but won nicely. And this will be interesting today because if he's going to be any sort of stakes horse, he's got to win off 85. Okay, well, best of luck and congratulations with Sacred. Thank you very much, Lydia. Thank you, William.